All right, this is your eyelet tool to insert them. Most of the time you can just push them in. No, I think we're gonna have to hammer these in. These are really tight at these edge of your table here. So just take your little tack hammer. You don't need a big hammer for this. And one, you got the brass ones too. You got the expensive ones. Okay, that's so that the wire doesn't dig into the wood. Put them on both sides. Okay, good. And okay, so the next step would be is to uh, add the uh, two nails for the termination points for the steel wire. Okay, you can cut it now. All right, we're going to cut the uh, wedge off. We just would take a little pocket knife and then cut it off. You can clean this up too if you like with the knife. Sometimes they leave a little bit of a ridge. And just throw that out. And this is a, a basically a, a form and wire embedding board. Um, most of the commercial places sell these that sell uh, wax foundation. Um, so it's a handy device to have. And then you put your two nails in for your wire terminations. One above each eyelet. And I notice you're not hammering them, hammering them all the way in. No, you don't want to hammer them all the way in uh, until you got the wire on there and then you can then you can do your hammering. Feed it through the eyelet. And once you get these things wired up, um, you can reuse them and just replace the wax foundation, say, at three years. Or use natural at three years. And you already have the wires in here, so that's an advantage. Initially, it's more labor, yes, but when you do it the second time, there's less labor because these are already done. Just make sure you got your wires tight. And then you wrap them around that little... Yeah, just wrap nail. it around the uh, nail head. Tap it in. And flip off the excess. Where's my needle nose? Look. I just had them here. Mm. Oh, there they are. Can't find my tools. Let's clip that off. Clip that off. Okay, and then we're going to tighten it with our crimping tool. Basically, this crimper is just two rollers with uh, notches in it. Just put it at a slight angle, go up and down, up and down, and it puts a ridge all along here and it also tightens up the wire. Okay. And then the next step would be is to put the wax foundation in. Okay, you can cut it down. All right. Uh, as you remember, we're going to pop these uh, wedges out. Um, the type of frame that we're using is wedge top and split bottom or divided bottoms, depending on who, what, what your manufacturer calls it. Um, but the reason for the uh, divided bottom, which is kind of important as you'll see, is for the wax foundation, you peel off the uh, paper. There's always one piece that sticks. You know it. 
Okay. And what you do, this has hooks at the top, and these hooks go under the wedge. So when you assemble it, you slide the wax into that uh, split bottom, and you can see it hangs down quite a bit. In fact, here, it, it, you can actually feel the wires. So that's the reason for that. And now, we're going to add the wedge top. And you put that in there, press it down, and I just put three nails. I've seen some people go crazy and put five staples. You don't need a lot of support here. Because eventually we're going to want to disassemble this in three years when we do our frame rotations. And if you have nails, you can just take your hive tool and just pop this right out. And you can replace the foundation. Okay, so basically the frame is assembled. You got three nails in there. And like I said, to disassemble it, you just stick your hive tool in here and pop these off. And uh, the next step is to embed the wires. Now there's two ways you can do the embedding. Um, they sell these rollers to roll across here, and that's the physical way to embed it. I've never really used those. Um, I use the uh, heat method, and basically what I did is I've got a homemade jig here with uh, basically just four screws, and that's to push down on the um, wire. And we're going to heat the wire up, and this is the critical part right here. I'm using just basically a, an old Sears battery charger um, on a 10 amp setting. This may or may not work with your charger. It, it depends on the model. Um, this one is short circuit proof, and what I mean by that, it's got a crowbar circuit in there, so in case you get infinite current, it actually cuts it down. So. Um, the uh, object here is to melt, the, melt it into the wax, and I go all four stages. I originally designed this to do it just hitting the, both of the end pieces, but apparently it's hard to keep <laughs> this thing in line all the way across, so I end up doing it basically four times. So I'm going to give you a demo here on how it's done. I don't know, you might want to focus on this point right here. And so you can act if I don't know if how close or how focused it can be. Oh, wait a minute. Am I not on it? Let's see. There we go. Sometimes they get wax build up on the screws. There you go. Let's see how quick it is. You just want it just below the surface of the wax. And then you can do the second section. You can see it melting in there. And you just hold it, go to the end. So you don't want to hold it long because if you hold it too long, you'll cut the thing in half. <laughs> because uh, if you do make a mistake, and I occasionally make mistakes, um, you can still reuse the frame. The bees will fix most of it. as long as you get those ridges down below there. So you should be able to see, you can see along here too where it's embedded on the other side in some cases. So but, yeah, it's nice and tight and when the bees build out the wax um, this helps prevent blowouts in your honey extractor too. So anyway that's a completed frame.